Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode 37. Today we got a big one for you guys, one inch big to be exact, and that's pretty sizable when you're used to dealing with the hardware we are. We bought the Milwaukee 2867-20 one inch pistol style impact wrench. Milwaukee impacts on this channel have enjoyed quite some success at the top of our rank charts in episodes past, but with latecomers from DeWalt in the compact sector, Makita in the mid torque series, and Bosch with their half inch Pro Factor, if you're a diehard Milwaukee guy, you might be squirming in your seat, needing to grab onto something, anything really, that delivers more beans just to put the other brands in their place once and for all. Of course, you could go with the 2864-20 3 quarter inch high torque, a respectable choice to be sure, and we look forward to showing you guys what that can do in a future episode. But if a half inch high torque is really not getting the job done for you, and you feel calling on a 100 foot pound upgrade to the three quarter inch might leave you lacking the pistol style one inch m18 will have you dialing 2867-20 into your phone real quick it advertises 1800 foot pounds nut busting and 1500 foot pounds fastening certainly big boy pants to fill in today we'll find out if it can do just that that would be a 28 percent to 50 percent increase in power over their half inch high torque so that's worth keeping in mind as on our very much heartbreaking, or as we'd say realistic, dyno, the 2767 model made 778 foot-pounds, which was enough for the top spot. So a 30% increase over that would put it sort of like a thousand here. Those expected increases don't come cheap, however. We picked this puppy up for 670 bucks. Compare that to the 220 or so dollar high torque we'll be showing it next to today. If that sounds like a lot, don't go clicking on the Dash 22 kit because with the batteries, that's a clean $1,000. Speaking of that kit though, as we tend to do on this channel, we will be testing the tool with the battery the brand advertises its torque figures with, which in this case, with the 2867-22, is an XC 8.0 high output, luckily for us and for the comment section. Whether it's the fact that this one inch came out in the last year or two and was actually able to be paired with this battery format, that now exists, or Milwaukee was able to actually design this tool around their high wattage, high output pack, or both. This one inch impact will be taking advantage of those sweet 21700 cells at a bare minimum either way. Milwaukee's item page where its specs are located includes a high output battery, so it gets one on this channel, simple as that. Let this serve as a notice to other brands, we're simple people, make your crazy torque claims, offer a budget bear tool, and entry level battery kit, but offer a version with the battery that it's quote supposed to have, or mention that in your marketing like Bosch does to get us to actually test it that way. That said, since today we'll be comparing this one inch to the 2767 half inch high torque, and Milwaukee pairs that with an XC 5.0, we're also curious how the one inch will perform with one. On our episode 18 with high output batteries, we saw only around 20 to 30 foot pound gains with this half inch and a full HD 12.0 battery with two theories as to why that may be true versus what we've seen from brands like Makita and DeWalt who see larger differences. One, the XC 5.0 battery is quite good already, which we confirmed when running it with a Ryobi P262. And two, within the brushless motor size range, we're not really starving these motors as much as we could be and theorize that that could very well change with, for example, a one inch impact. Today, we're going to determine if that's true. Regardless of the battery you put in it, at 10.9 inches long, it's hard to call this thing practical for really any application that you need to fit it in somewhere. It's about 25% longer than the half inch model and at 10.5 pounds is damn near twice the weight. That said, it's actually pretty comfortable in the hand, like the weight is well located. If you look at the back housing, it's not really a chunker by any means. The weight is situated in a way that this thing feels smaller than it actually is, if that's something you can believe. And with the size range getting an adjustable position and ratcheting angle handle here, we've actually been using this tool for a few weeks at the point of making this episode. It's actually a more pleasure to hold onto and use than the Earthquake 20 volt. Let's get into the testing though. We'll be showing this one inch against the 2767-20 high torque you might be upgrading from if you need a lot more punch in the cordless flavor. Here's the half inch high torque in our five second working torque test. Five hundred and seventy two is still out of every impact we've ever tested on this channel, the highest we've seen in a working torque test. This thing just kills it in short forward bursts. 
Now for one inch, let's see what she can do. Disclaimer, on pretty much all of our one inch runs, we're blocking the dang timer here with the side handle. We're not used to really holding one of those. You can still hear the timer go off, but apologies for not being able to see it. So that's a monstrous 725 foot pounds in just five seconds. This thing makes 15 second best case scenario, high torque type power in just five seconds. At no point on this graph are these tools looking similar at all. Let's check out our max torque test, which is 10 seconds in reverse. Here's the one inch with both tools on screen in the graph. This one had us scratching our head, clearly 100, 120 foot pound gain down low, signaling a big dynamic torque advantage for the one inch, but ultimately, overall, a much smaller gain with the one inch in this reverse test than we expected. We did this test three times as usual, same story. It's worth mentioning the 2767 half inch also preferred forward in our testing, but as you can see from its max torque run, also puts it down there, really no problem. Luckily for Milwaukee and our viewers, our best case scenario test procedure allows for cordless tools to be tested in both forward and reverse with the best results shown here. So this monster of a one inch gun gets to re-enter the forward test arena and see what she can do. Here's how the 2767 half inch does in this same 15 seconds forward best case scenario test. And here's the $700 one-inch 2867. One thousand and twenty. This is the first quadruple digit result on this channel. We know a lot of brands have numbers on their boxes in the thousands, but compared to the old school method of rating impacts like your father may have used that we use on this channel, this is the first one to actually make it there. While it may not be matching those box numbers with our testing setup on this impact wrench either, that is a 31% difference. And if you'll remember, that's sort of what we were looking for if Milwaukee's marketing claims are to be consistent across the range. This tool just really likes being in forward like they designed it for building bridges or something. Despite being the first or second most powerful cordless on the channel up till now, look at that half inch high torque on the graph. It's really not even on the same planet. But you may be wondering if the 2767 bangs you around on tough bolts and got a 7.5 from us on our wrist breaking score, what is this thing doing to your body? Well, as a matter of fact, we found even without using the side handle, this tool was comparably pleasant to use. It does have some very heavy rotational torque on you when it gets going, enough to tweak our dyno in a run or two, as you might have seen, but not that broken washing machine effect that the half inch has going on. The 2867-20 one inch pistol high torque gets a 6.5 from us on our wrist breaking score, mainly due to that torquing action it's got going on, which if you had to choose is sort of an easier type to live with. A sign that more power doesn't always mean more jumbling around on cordless, and more importantly to us, if your impact is doing more jumbling around, it doesn't necessarily make more power than another. As we promised earlier, let's see how this 2867 performs if you are not using the battery it comes with and is recommended by Milwaukee, an XC 5.0 that the half inch high torque was using. When we strapped an HD 12.0 on this half inch, we saw big dynamic torque gains down low, but ultimately only around 3% in total. Given this one inch was designed much more recently with high output batteries likely in mind, Let's see what that spread looks like on a much higher draw brushless motor. Well, 
Well, dang, that's 808 foot-pounds, 26% less than the XC 8.0's run, and about what the half-inch can make with the right battery. And that's not all. This is the best-case scenario test you're seeing here, which is its best run as usual. This battery was sort of like running a non-HP battery on a Ryobi P262 all over the place, sometimes performing less than the half-inch high torque, showing that the XC 5.0 pack that we've actually had a lot of luck with on this channel just cannot keep up with the demands of this one inch, which may not be a surprise to anyone watching, but still seem pretty dramatic watching it ourselves. Given the comparably low wrist breaking score this tool earned today, and its heavy weight that somehow feels smaller than it is, and the quite high but in line with what we sort of expected power output it displayed today, plus the one key tool tracking that's made standard, which is probably necessary at its price point, the 2867-20 is a good buy, we think. If you need this type of work done cordless, there's few places you can go, so it's always a good result when the few options that do exist check all of our boxes, even if we sort of felt like, well, it damn well better meet our expectations with this price point. This won't be the last larger than your average drive size tool we test on this channel. To see more of that, click subscribe and like to keep the momentum going, and we really thank each and every one of you for watching.